Today's episode of the Natural Habitat Podcast is brought to you by nobody because we need your help. What we need you to do is go to naturalhabitatpodcast.com, scroll down to the bottom, and click the donate button and give us your money because everything that we do here is funded by you. We don't have any sort of... Sorry. I thought I heard someone coming in. These executives, man. The executives told us that we weren't allowed to ask for money. But if we don't get the money, they're going to kill us. They will. <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm trying not to cry. Please, we need you to pay the money. It's pretty much a ransom. Rod and Todd, they're not that great. They turned out to be really bad guys, okay? So send the money. Psychopaths. And if you can't send any money to our donate link at naturalhabitatpodcast.com, then we need you to go to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and review our podcast so we can get up to the number one spot if we do that they'll let us go so please help us please help please help. do it now the natural habitat podcast the natural habitat podcast presents The Shadow, a man of mystery who strikes terror in the very souls of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Yeah, that's right, criminals. It's The Shadow, motherfucker. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Natural Habitat Podcast, everybody. My name is Mikey Booya. My name is The Shadow. And that was some old school shit. Super. That was way old school. Old radio times. Uh, we were actually sent that in a time capsule by one of our listeners, and they were like, hey, I dug this up out of my grandpa's ass. Take it. And (laughs) we opened it up. Because that's what we do around here. Yeah, that's what we do. We took it, (laughs) opened it up with our bare hands. We didn't even put on gloves. And what was inside was that. So I'm glad we did. It's a little uh, little nod back to old radio mixed with a little bit of new radio. Mm -hmm. Because people go, "Uh, Joey, Mikey, you have your podcast. Uh, It's called the Natural Habitat Podcast. It has over 150 episodes, over 150 hours of you guys talking. Uh, why did you do this? What podcast got you into this? And we go, no, 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 bitch. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Just <laughs> be just quiet. Off a stupid yeah, right? we just go to and we hold their lips together and for the yeah. for the rest of the conversation. And we go, this was inspired by old time radio. And then we let go, slap their face just gingerly, not enough to leave a mark or anything, and then and then we leave. How many times has that happened? A hundred? At least. Yeah. So we're getting the word out. Old time radio is what started this. Yeah. And uh, you said we that you said that you used to listen to that driving around with your pops when you were a no, kid? No, 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 no. I never heard of them. Never? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's right. I forgot. Uh, the Shadow was, was one of the... Someone told me that... <laughs> okay. I don't know if this is right or not, but somebody told me recently that you can make a baby inside of a woman with another woman's DNA without a sperm. That's for real? Yeah. See, I'm not smart enough or scientific enough to know. It's uh, it's the newest frog research. Frog boys everywhere make it happen. (laughs) Frog boys. (laughs) Yeah, frog boys. See, it's like, uh, I guess, like you make a test tube baby with the DNA and then you put it inside. But it's, I don't know, man. It's nature. Yeah. Nature finds a way. Uh, I guess. Who's, Jeff Goldblum style. Uh, I was going to say, who said that? And you fucking immediately, <laughs> you immediately knew. Nature always finds a way. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, our sponsor today is Nature Box. Always find your way. Naturebox.org. Don't get lost in the woods. Nature Box. 
<laughs> if somebody's listening to this and they're like, are these fucking guys really doing a Nature Box commercial five <laughs> minutes in? <laughs> mid-roll, mid-roll. <laughs> yep, that's what we do. Um, that means. Today we have uh, some special guests in the house. Who? We have Open Water and JTG. <laughs> what you know about what? that? What do oh. you know about that? Never heard of them. Tell me. Are you serious? No, I'm just kidding. Because you're the one that introduced <laughs> me to these guys. So if it wasn't you, yeah. that would be kind of strange. No, they're awesome. They're awesome. Everybody's about to find out soon. Soon enough. Mm -hmm. We got them on Skype right now, but they are on hold. And they're we, grounded. And we're going to smoke up with you guys first. We're going to play. They're grounded. We put them on restriction. Mm -hmm. That's true. They had, to, they had to sit there with the dunce hat. Hey, how times have changed when we didn't even get to have a fucking dunce hat. Who did? I want to know. Was it our grandparents? Uh, I want to say, yeah. I think our grandparents. Somebody that's at about some point in time had to wear a pointy hat in the corner when they were bad in class. <laughs> I, I know I know one person that for sure has worn that hat as a child. Who? Pat Sajak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know he was, a, he was a troublemaker. Yeah. Pat Sajak. Me. <laughs> no, you know that you never had the dunce hat. Maybe. No, but in theory, yeah. but not actual literal dunce hat. I wore an imaginary one. I think they should fucking, instead of, uh, you know, whatever the hell teachers do now, just give them a dunce hat, make them sit in the corner and look like an idiot. I, I think the new dunce hat is reading their text messages to the class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, right. I'm going to read this message to everybody. Yeah, that's true. Now wear that hat, motherfucker. Man, well, it's hard to be a student. A, I mean, it's hard to be a teacher. To wear. It's hard to be a student, <laughs> hard to be a teacher. Both of those are tough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I I did all this preparation today. I got all I got ready with uh with all these all these sounds and all of these songs. And you know what I did not do is get some smoke, get some smoke song pulled up. So uh, uh, so what I am gonna do here? Look, I got something. It's a fail safe. It works every time, and it's already ready. So don't worry about it. All right. So whatever I just said about not being prepared, I'm going to edit that out, and we're going to act like it never happened. So are you ready for a new sound speed? Prepared we are. All right. Okay, I got this song lined up, had it ready all day. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's get into it. So everybody out there, flick your bicks, snap your pics, and hashtag them NHP Smoke Sesh. We will all smoke together as one. If you see spaghetti on the ground, don't eat it. Unless it's on top of other spaghetti. Or I guess on a plate. Or a clean newspaper. Fuck it, just eat the spaghetti. Save me some. Don't buy drugs from cops. Take your dog to the bathroom before taking it to the groomer. Or else it'll shit all over the place like my dog did. True story. If you have to wipe more than three times, you should probably change your diet. Or shave your ass. <coughs> Great advice today. <coughs> Those are all free. <coughs> Those are all free. Freebies everywhere. Yeah, that was just because we felt so so thankful for you guys going and donating. Trying to do our part. Mm -hmm. you know? Trying to help a motherfucker <laughs> out. Yeah. Trying to get a motherfucking scholarship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. Is that what we're doing? Are we buying you a goddamn scholarship? Mm -hmm. Do you buy scholarships? I thought they were given. Well, if oh, you no, if you know like, the, if you know the like right fill people, out a form if you could like if you could pay the right people, you could be given a scholarship. Is what you're saying? 
Yeah, you gotta you gotta grease the handle a little bit. You gotta give it a hand job, basically. <laughs> give the handle a hand job? Yeah. Yeah, you know. Whatever you gotta do, right? Open the door. Yep. So uh speaking of open, let's get into open water. Let's do it. We got him we got him on the line still. Let's jump over to yeah. it. All right, we have open water live on the line. Can you hear me, my friend? Yes, sir. How we doing? We are doing great. Very high. Very high today. <laughs> Absolutely. Super. Um, thank you for joining us, taking some time out of your day. We really appreciate it. Oh man, of course. Of course. I think you guys So um for for people out there that might not be familiar with you and what you do, why don't you uh give them a short introduction? Uh well yeah, I'm open water producer, singer, songwriter. Uh from Chicago, just moved out to Los Angeles. Um I guess it's more of like my genre is, I guess, electronic, but I'm doing a lot of hip hop and trap and kind of everything. Nice. Fuck genres, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the new trend lately. So nice. So, so, uh, so you were, were you, were you born in Chicago? I was actually born in Los Angeles. Uh, I moved to Chicago when I was about four, and um, and then just now got back out here about four months ago. All right, cool. Um, nice. What uh. There's I I've always I've always loved Chicago because Chicago is like really artistic. It breeds mm -hmm. like a lot of a lot of crazy shit. I know that um there's Second City. It's like a famous I don't know if you're into comedy at all. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Second City is huge out there. Yeah, Second City fucking made uh <coughs> Dave Foley, John Candy, a bunch of like greats came out of there. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I think that it's cool that you you know, don't have a you came from LA, are in LA, but you have this Chicago influence. And I think that, you know, I was listening to your music this morning mm -hmm. and, you know, you're definitely a totally like completely creative dude and out of the box of a lot of the other shit that, you know, you hear out of California. So it definitely Hold shows on. that you have all these influences. So mm -hmm. what, what kind of got you started in making music yourself? Was it writing or was it, on the production side, what kind of pulled you into it? Um, I mean, I, I guess the, for starters, I mean, I, I'm very blessed to come from a, a music background. Uh, my father's been a recording artist, you know, since you know the '80s. I mean, he really got into it at, at a very early age as well. My grandfather was a jingle producer, song or and songwriter, uh, jazz pianist and conductor. He conducted yeah. the Chicago Symphony, so it's been in my family. Uh, for generations and it just kind of passed down. It was just something I've known I've wanted to do since, since birth. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. So you, so it's safe to say that you probably had a home studio in your house before you knew what to do with it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. <laughs> That's dope. So I, I mean, that was that, you know, I was the kid that just got to sit in the corner of while my dad had recording sessions and just soaked up as much knowledge as I could. And, and knew that that's what I wanted to do. I've always been so passionate about it. So when I was four years old, actually, it was for my fourth birthday, when I was still living in Los Angeles, my my dad and my godfather, my godfather is actually uh, the drummer of Blood, Sweat, and Tears. They got <laughs> this little thing together to get me a little, like, child's drum set. Little Ricky? Yeah, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I just started kind of, wailing on the drums and getting a rhythm down and That's teaching dope. myself that. And every time my dad would go to, you know, different studios and stuff, even when I was that young, he would plot me down on a drum set. And I, so I started to kind of understand, I guess, rhythm at a really early, early age. Um, by, the, by the time I was six, I wanted to start playing piano Nice. and just kind of got myself into every instrument. By 13, I was playing guitar and it just kind of, kept growing that way i just wanted to know as much as i could about music and learn as many instruments as i could that's super smart when did you start trying to sing from a young age like that too oh i've been singing since i could put words together nice <laughs> i'm learning or even if i couldn't <laughs> i was still humming a melody <laughs> that's awesome yeah man man that's so crazy it's like it's cool that you know you you have this in your family and you share this love for it it's one of those things that when when your family is you know in music and stuff like you know you and your aunts and uncles are in bands and 
people sing it always goes down and follows along like through the generations and mm -hmm. everybody has that love for it like it's it's like imagine if if you were if if you were born into like corn like if your dad was like a famous corn farmer and mm -hmm. he like made like <laughs> all the corn for america and he was like look i'm gonna teach you everything about corn brandon and it's gonna be the shit you'd be like fuck this i don't want to do corn the rest of my life <laughs> yeah hell I, no. i'm gonna move to chicago you know what i mean but yeah 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 but in, instead it was you know this studio in your house and you got to learn these instruments at a young age and you know you didn't have to do the regular thing of you know you have to buy a piano tutor to teach him piano you know we'll just teach him because you know this is our shit and it's fresh that uh that you know you you had this opportunity and that you you're totally making the best of it Absolutely, and uh man. you know it's it's dope man that's like uh it's a crazy come up man you got a crazy story for sure well i think i think it's dope that he just chose to follow along because you know most of the time like the kids don't want to follow in their parents footsteps yeah that's you know what, what i'm saying, saying? and not everybody is blessed with like that that want to do the music in the first place and the the inherent need to do it is what's awesome you know what i mean you're mm -hmm. a smart kid you know what you're doing and and the music that you're making shows it you know like you can tell that you care about what you do just by listening to the shit the quality of the music is dope you know what i mean and that's like that's usually the definition of like whether somebody cares about what they do or not yeah you it's know just, what i mean it's just my passion for music you know? yeah I'm most definitely doing this to be famous or to get rich or anything i'm doing this because this is what i fucking love to do yeah and that and it really shows and that's what i'm saying you know yeah. what i mean and, and it's unique for you and i think that's cool that that you chose all these things from young ages like that and that you wanted to do that you know like wanting to play the piano and everything which obviously like leads to every other instrument once you know that shit you know what i mean and and, and it's very similar to a lot of people's um stories as well you know like like it, like we talk to a lot of people and they always say like it's always like one instrument you know usually it's like the guitar or drums or like like piano or whatever like you said most of the time the producers don't have that talent to sing so you have something that's unique you know what i'm saying like you can you can make a beat with the fucking idea or like knowing the fact that you're going to harmonize and add something else to it so you can leave it empty opposed to where a producer has to fill that slot you know what i'm saying so it's like you have this ability that other people don't have that's like super special you know what i mean it's really dope man I, yeah i appreciate that it's just i've always whenever i'm writing music i kind of like there's never been a time where i just think up a melody or i just think up a cool guitar part i'm usually picturing the entire track finished in my head like i picture what the yeah it's gonna sound like and what you know, the only thing I pretty much don't know at that period is what lyrics I'm going to be writing. But that comes. Yeah, that comes like in the moment, right? As you're writing it. Yeah. It's all kind of like, you know, color by number. It's getting that that grid down and then filling in piece by piece what you need to. And you kind of know where what should fit where. It's just yeah. it's making it together the best way. That's so what's way been the it. difference for you between like, Chicago in here. What's your work work ethic like? Like oh God, night and day. It is yeah. night and day in Chicago. The scene is way more about, especially if you're living there. If you're from there, it's all about who can be the Chicago's best DJ. You know, huh. and I've seen some of the most incredible artists come out of Chicago. You know, Louis Child, uh, who I've had the pleasure of knowing, is butt of mine, and he's oh. just you know kids. 18 years old and yeah. a total prodigy, yeah. an absolute total prodigy. It's insane to see and, and listen to the work that he's been putting out. I mean, it's kids like that that come out of there. You're like, you know, fuck yeah. This is yeah. <laughs> proud to rep Chicago. Hell yeah. But at the same time, even him, he's coming out here in a month or two. You know, there, nobody who wants to make a career for themselves is going to be sticking in Chicago for music, unless you want, you know, in this field especially, unless you want to be a DJ. Yeah, yeah I feel like it's kind of hard in other states. I mean, like it's a gift and a curse to come from other places that don't have big industry scene, because yeah. like if you are that one that's popping. Boy, life is good. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. If if the state is backing you, if everybody, all the people love you and shit, and you're the one for your place, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that, then the then the love is there. But if you're not, 
<laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Not not <laughs> yeah, it's like bad, just like everywhere else. You know what I'm saying? And then like trying to be out here, you gotta be good too. You know, like you really do. You gotta like you gotta stand out above the rest because it's like a fucking deep ocean of like a lot oh, of people yeah. trying to get out in the same shit. I think though a lot of people don't think about this, and they always think that they're you know such a small fish in a big pond when they get out here. But especially in the music industry, it's just resourceful. You have all these connections and ability to make music with all these incredible artists and share your talents together and put it all together in a room and in a track. It's it's opportunity like it, it's completely unprecedented compared to back home. Yeah, yeah totally. Still. And that's that's really what it's all about is collaborating and creating music with like minded people that, you know, feel the same way about it and where you guys can jive together and shit and it's always good to, uh, you know, find people that are, you know, when, you, when you're in an area with a lot of artists, you're around people that are in it for the right reasons. And when you're in, you know, a smaller area or, you know, a kind of niche market, then everyone's kind of battling and it gets a little, like, territorial exactly. and people are co always, you know, hating on each other and sabotaging people's shit. And, exactly. you know, that's... Uh, we're, we're all adults here, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we're all adults, and we're all artists, and we all love music, so. Yep. I've, I've seen it, too, out here, exactly what you said. When, it, when you have a smaller, knit group of people who are pushing for the same thing, it feels very competitive. Yeah. And it shouldn't feel that way, because once we got out here, it's just, like, it's just more inspiring to see your homies going out and putting out this, these incredible tracks and playing these great shows. It's like, yeah, I'm going to be doing that next to them, not, like, yeah out, you know? exactly yeah mm -hmm. it's like i i look at it like you know like it's really motivating at the same time you know what i mean it's like yeah the the best thing for me so far is to be able to meet all the people that i've met and be able to see so many people succeed around me and i've been noticing like everybody feels kind of the same way you know like in this industry it's like really a tight-knit community you know in the edm side of things and motherfuckers really look out for each other for the most part and and make connections available and and a lot of people grow together you know what i mean and and i think it's really cool it's super super dope and inspiring at the same time and it makes you like you know it just shows you that you can't give up you know what i mean everything is right there you know it's it's just uh just got to keep working yep yep it's 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 constant drive but if you're doing it for the right reasons, it should. It's, it doesn't feel like work. You want to get up in the morning. You want to do yeah. this shit every morning and yeah, work definitely. on it all day, and link up with people that are willing to sit in a room and create with you and bounce ideas and inspire each other. It's just we all love what we do. Yeah. You know, I know you do. It's fucking. <laughs> you and I get together in the studio, Joe. You know, we just yeah. hang. It's a hang time, but you also get to create, and it's it's dope. Mm -hmm. So what's you got a lot of you got a lot of dope releases in a lot of places. What's your like biggest release today? Biggest release? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've been really blessed with uh, all the Monster Cat stuff. Obviously, um, you know the people that I've gotten to work with through them are amazing people. Mr. Fiji Ouija, Direct and nice. Advice. Yeah, I even wrote one of the tracks. Not a lot of people know this, but I wrote a track on the last Puppet record to Vagabond. You and I did that track together, and yeah. um, he got his brother to sing on it, actually, who's also in a band. And I've known Brendan, uh, Puppet, since, like, elementary school. That kid and I grew up together. And That's it's so dope. crazy to see all these right. people that I even grew up with, even in the same field as I am. It's really yeah, fun shit's to have awesome. those, that little connection. Um, but, yeah, I mean, other than... I don't know, Monster Cat, I, you know, I had a, a listening release we did with Time. I did with Moonbee called Time. Yeah, that should be dope. That did very well, and I'm stoked on that. Um, but I'm just, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy to have had what I, you know, the success that I have had through everything. But it's just growing. I'm, I'm trying to grow and um, just branch off and collaborate with a bunch of people. That's why I got, you know, JT and G and I moved out here a few months ago, and we've, we've been pushing a, kind of a slightly different project than just this EDM stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's more like hip hop. R&B, pop, you know, that people can relate, that everybody can relate to. Yeah. And that's, uh, I think, I think that's good. The, the mix of the hip hop and EDM, you know, it's kind of like how 
Varsity Dropouts does like a mix of the EDM hip hop and what it does is it, it like brings together the two communities, you know what I mean? Cuz mm. there was there was a long time when like hip hop kids would hate on EDM kids and vice versa and it was yep. kind of like, you know, they were they were two totally separate things and people didn't understand them, but once you listen to it and you realize that it's a whole type of like musical culture and it's more yep. than just glow sticks then you know it opens <laughs> it opens your mind to it so to me it's dumb that it took this long you know what i mean like if you honestly think about it it is we talk about most, those imaginary most fucking, lines <laughs> most edm producers are just fucking beat makers mm -hmm. and rappers need beats you know yeah. what i'm saying and i mean it, yeah. it's a fucking it's a marriage waiting to happen you know what i mean so it's like it's ridiculous it took this long and i think the problem has been that most rappers just don't know how to do it right you know yeah. and, and they just don't know what they're like you know they don't understand like the trap side of things or like the other genres and stuff you know what i mean so it doesn't really like work out you know mm -hmm. I mean, that's the biggest thing, too. I mean, yeah, I'm sitting next to JTG right now for all those listeners who don't know. But uh, he and I, when we, he and I first linked up, you know, he had been all about the hip-hop scene, you know, in Chicago, the Chicago hip-hop scene. Yeah, and, there's and, a, and that's a huge uh, hip-hop world in its own because, like, there's so many subcultures just there, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, with, like, the drill music and all the other type of shit that's out there, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy to see, like, in different areas... They have all their different subcultures just in hip hop, and that's so similar to fucking what EDM is. EDM is the exact same fucking thing. It's all these other subcultures and subgenres of fucking different styles of beats. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's crazy, and and everything is very like territorial, I guess. You know, it's just like how a hip hop scene is. You know, it's like oh, it's us versus you ahead of them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Real. Um, Sorry, real Sorry. quick to uh, to JTG, my camera is not working on Skype, so I had no idea you were there, and I did not mean to ignore <laughs> you for the last half hour. My bad. <laughs> no, it's all good. We, we, we're just chilling. I'm just chilling. I'm high. We're <laughs> yeah, nice. I was like, oh uh, my god, man, that dude's there, and I didn't even say anything. <laughs> I can see you, so it's all good. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we uh, when I first met JTG, it was kind of this you know, perfect moment when he had been, you know, I'd listened to his work and I was a fan of his work. Uh, and he knew I was an electronic music producer at the time. And as soon as we linked up and I started playing him some of my shit, I had then come to find out that he was the biggest electronic music fan and went to festivals and would go and just, you know, Cascade and fucking That's Calvin Harris, like anybody under the sun. Yeah, festival season was my shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. So Smart. It, you said, Joey, like it was that perfect harmony of being like, all right, let's mix this shit together and really make something different. I mean, I'd like to think that the stuff that we've been putting out lately has been a little bit different than that typical, you know, hip hop trap kind of shit. It's not about really the, the drops at all as opposed to like. Yeah, what? because it's different. It's like it's more like chill. It's more like um Futury or something, you know, it's more like it's just its own thing, you know what I mean? And it's just like you said, and a lot of people are doing the same thing. It's like a fuck genre thing, it's just music, you know what I mean? Yeah, right, exactly. and, it, and it just happens to be trying to find a home in an electronic world, you know, and that's like, you know, it, and it shouldn't be um, as hard as it is for us to find outlets you know i think that a lot of these guys right now are starting to open up the lane for us a little bit more in these channels i think like a lot of people are starting to, to support a little bit more of the rapper slash hip-hop vibe in some of these shits so it's starting to work in our favor but we just you know we got to keep pushing this shit man we got to keep um getting it out there you know you guys are doing a good job doing it i know a lot of other people that are trying to get in there as well and trying to like mix it up and get rid of like not worrying about the genres and it's working well for a lot of people so you know you just got to keep it moving i mean like that's really i think i think by next year fucking future bass is going to be like the biggest genre anyways Sorry, it's, yeah. it's already taken its place. Yeah, you know, and and then after that, who knows what'll be next? Maybe it'll be like maybe it'll get 
fully into the no genres thing. You know what I mean? And maybe it'll just be a, a bunch of mix of just fucking weird ass shit. I think it should and, be. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you're making music, you're you're, you're creating the feel. So yeah, you can't really limit your feeling. You just you yeah, know what you're feeling at that moment at that time. And yeah. if, you're, if you're an artist that goes off of feels and not of what people would tell you you should go and how you should sound, then Absolutely, music's yeah. gonna show it. You know, what, well, what, yeah, ev- every beat dictates the feeling. Exactly, when you, you hear know? the beat, that's like, okay, I can think of something that fits this beat. You know, it's uh-huh. not, you don't have to stay in your shell. You just do whatever feels feels right, and then yeah. that, and those tracks end up being the best. Yeah, because yeah. you'll you'll invoke that same emotion in someone when they listen exactly. to it. Everybody's yeah. still gonna try to label it, but it is what it is. Yeah, and that's what we're when, honestly when me and Brandon's like main objectives are like it's just to make music actually saying something you know what i'm saying like uh lyrical like i'm not saying completely lyrical but it gives a feel to where people can actually relate to it not just like bumping it in their cars and it's not, like it can just be radio all day we're trying to mm-hmm. people can actually sit with it and, like when they're on a bus or they're walking to work or working out whatever like if they're actually wanting to listening to this like that's dope so it's like it's it's music music to remember and not music exactly. to forget. Exactly, not, not it should just, be not for now. Music yeah. should be timeless, you know. Yeah, exactly. So music shouldn't be something that you just listen to for a short period of time and then you get sick of it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you know, and I feel like and I feel like unfortunately, as much as I absolutely love electronic music, I feel like a lot of it nowadays is about that really dope drop that people can bump and get into for like that summer. And then if honestly, once that summer's over, you're not going to bump that tune again. You know, it's, it's cool, but it had its, it had its drift. Yeah. Right? It had its energy. It had its output and you wore it out and then it's done. And then every once in a while, there's a fucking lean on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know what you I know, mean? Look, and it's, it's not even lean on. Like a lot of people, even going back to saying, you know, how people are, are stereotyped uh, electronic music producers. Little do people, I guarantee you, even realize Skrillex is all over Bieber's last record. Every almost every fucking hit on that record. No, everybody knows that. Track. Everybody knows that. That's a fucking whole Skrillex album. Everybody knows that. Yeah, definitely. yeah. Everybody knows, and and like no, everybody that's 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 educated knows. I'm <laughs> saying the general public of like people who sit there and listen to you know B96 and radio hit radio. They have no idea that Skrillex produced those tracks. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess on some fronts, yeah. Yeah, they still, but, but, they still think I mean, everybody. His face was on all of it. Yeah. From the beginning, oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Tough. Like it was known that it was his shit. So yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, but that's a different thing, you know. Skrillex is his own fucking universe. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, what I, it's like hard to compare anything else to Skrillex. There really is no comparison. I mean, yeah, like. No. Yeah. You know, he any anything he's gonna do is fucking stand out. But but I mean like as far as like the other shit, you know, some people get lucky. Major Laser got lucky with a billion views on that shit. You know what I mean? And like some yeah. of, some of, it's just like you, it's it's just all the feeling like we've been talking about, and you catch that right feel, and the motherfuckers love it, and then it, and then it's a wrap after that. And it's like who knows? We nobody knows like what it is. You know, it's just the right chemistry at the right moment. It's everything, right. everything aligns at the right time. Nobody knows what's going to be a hit. You know, I've seen a lot of people make songs that they can't fucking stand that end up being their biggest hits. You know what I mean? And they have to go perform these fucking songs that they hate all the time and they just can't stand it. You know what I mean? But they're their biggest yeah. hits. And and you just never know. You know, it's like the luck of the draw. Who knows? Will fucking Major Lazer still want to play that track 10 years from now? They probably will because it's dope as fuck, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <pretty> much. <laughs> you know, but I, I mean, like, who knows? You know, who knows how they personally feel about it? I don't know. It's just, it's just yeah. one of those things. And you guys are on your own path and that's what's dope. What, what do you think the future holds for you guys, like besides like, you know, your guys' group or whatever you're trying to do right now, I mean like, what do you guys think like the ultimate goal is for you? Is like, do you think it's to stay independent or are you trying to fucking go corporate with it? Or oh, no, like, no, like what, what, uh, what are your dreams? Bro, we're trying to make music. That's we're, trying we're trying to make to music do. and honestly, and I want to be, or we want to be independent as long as possible at least, you know, I would, I mean, I would really love, we, we would love to like start our own like label type shit. But 
that's uh, future future that's like yeah. future future but and in, like independent for as, as long as possible i don't want any like anybody just limiting our ideas and Creativity. telling us what to do and all that stuff yeah we, i mean yeah i get it helping some people but honest to god we, we've all seen it's possible to do it without labels without it's fucking impossible just do it yeah, we, work. everything is possible We're trying to create oh, yeah. our own movement of yeah. Yeah, especially it's it's 2016, so the way that the internet is, you could just put all your content out there and mm -hmm. own it yourself, monetize yeah, it, yeah. and make way more than you ever would at a record label, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. And you actually have this connection with the fans, and it's unfiltered music. No one's telling you how to make it, and that's really mm -hmm. the only way to do it, in my opinion. Amen, so, dude. That's, amen. that's exactly how we run it. Yeah, so you guys are doing it right, man, and uh, you know I think that there's there's nothing but greatness coming from you guys, and I'm excited to see where you both take it. You know, appreciate, oh, man. appreciate, appreciate it a lot. lot. So, um, do you guys do you guys have anything that uh, that you would like to play for the people? We have this recent release that you did called Tough Love, but yeah, if you I'll, have a uh, yeah. if you have anything else that you'd like oh, to play, bump that, man. Yeah, go bump ahead. That one. Yeah, all right, cool. Well, we're going to play this for everybody right now. And um, thank you for joining us, guys. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll have to have you on in the future and touch bases with you. Hey, Most no definitely, problem. man. Thanks for having All us. the best to you guys. All right, cool. Thanks again. All right, later. Peace. Boom. <laughs> Boom, clap. Boom, clap. Well, there it is. That's dope. Boom, clap. Those guys were fresh, man. Yeah. They're doing it right. <laughs> it's cool uh it's it's cool to hear people you know talk about music in in such a like passionate way you know what i mean like people uh i mean a lot like all the people that we talk to love music in in some way but both of them were very adamant that they are making music to say something and making music that they love overall that that's the main goal which is dope and i can uh I can definitely respect that and relate to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I think that... Speak up, Joey. People can't hear you. It's some of the same reasons that we like to do music, you know? Yeah. So I think that... I don't know. I think that they're just lucky to be in a position that they're in. So they choose to use the force for good. You know what I mean? And that's good, man. I, I think that they're smart dudes. I hope that they stick with what they want and i i hope they get it you know what i mean like same for same for everybody that's out there really grinding and and pushing and trying to get to where they want to be at you know what i mean because that's the only way you're going to get there you don't you don't get there by hoping and wanting mm -hmm. you get there by fucking grinding and struggling so it's like i don't know i think i think that they're on on a righteous path and i hope that they stick to it and fucking get everything that they got coming you know what i mean i think that i think they're really smart dudes i think that they're doing things for the right reasons i think that their hearts are in the right places you know what i mean and same as you you know i think i think that uh i think that they just um they just gotta get it they're doing it you know so same as everybody we just we just gotta get it yeah it's uh, it's all there for the taking you just gotta get it so let's uh let's let's get some of their some of their music tough love this new track let's play it let's get it let's get it everybody out there this is um open water featuring jtg and g child with tough love thank you for joining us we love you and we'll see you next time daddy like a cigarette one verse at a time, more extend one hearse at a time JDG ain't never seen a beat, he ain't flat line Nigga, check the stat line, you ain't getting money, stop lying You ain't really grinding, nigga You just out your lining, nigga I been going through it, honestly, man I'm tired of fucking losing All these niggas fake, all these bitches using Man, I swear I'm about to lose it Smoking weed while I'm cruising Man, my habit's so abusive Cause I'm always stressed out They wonder why I use it Dad told me, wake the fuck up Kicked out the house, guess they call it tough love Guess they call it tough love Guess they call it tough love. Guess they call it tough love. Will you remember me now that I've been gone? Got some place I'd rather be. Finally moving on, you're just a distant memory. After far too long, and I won't ever think twice. How's that for tough love? Goddamn. 
But lately I've been feeling like they all want something from me Good Kush never call from it The clouds rain but it's still sunny All the sacrifice still working on the bond money In case they try to take something from me Bet it up, you can count on it It's a promise, not a doubt, homie But then again, please don't insult my intelligence See, I live out these moments you're witnessing When they told me I couldn't, I went and did <laughs> Yeah, they doubted us ATI, boy, yeah, count it up Moving with the money like an armor truck Thanks to a little bit of tough love, hold up Will you remember me? Now that I've been gone Got some place I'd rather be Finally moving on, you're just a distant memory After far too long and I won't ever think twice How's that for tough love? Natural Habitat Podcast.